Hello, my name is Ian Dixon, and together with Heather Woodhouse, Mike Diesner, and Matthew Roman, we're the Newcastle University Data Science Gregs team. And our motto is, if you're eating a sausage roll, the world can't be too bad, now can it? So about a month and a half ago, the team at Gregs asked us if we could help them better understand their customer transaction data, more specifically customers who've used a credit card or a debit card. We analyzed this data, made some observations, and then turned those observations into a customer understanding, which we think will help Greg's make the best business decisions. Based on the Greg's strategic plan, which is found on the website, we think we can help best in sections two and three, or improving customer experience and creating a more competitive supply chain. We've taken this customer understanding and broken it into three sections, an exploratory data analysis, or EDA of customer types, customer demographics based on spending habits, and a breakdown of the spending habits of customers based on how many times they visit Greg's every week. Now I'm gonna pass on to Heather, who's gonna give an introduction to our investigation of the data. Thanks, Ian. So um, I'm gonna discuss the results of our exploratory data analysis. Firstly, we looked at every individual transaction in the data set. I then stripped away everything other than the time of the transaction the amount spent on the transaction and introduced a new variable called customer type. The customer type is card only if there was an electronic token payment ID present in the transaction, loyalty only if there was a customer account number associated with the transaction, and then there's also a category if both were present and a category if neither were present. Now let's look at how much each customer type spends. The overall average transaction total for the given data, regardless of customer type, is £3.76, which is in line with the information provided to us by Greg's. However, the mean transaction value by group reveals that their spending differs. Transactions involving card only, or both, spend 50 to 60 percent more than average, bringing them above the £4 mark. In contrast, those falling into the loyalty only or neither categories spend around 70p below average. The loyalty only and neither categories do not use card at all. So the lower values could be because if people are using their loose change rather than their card, they don't spend as much maybe. They just grab what they can based on what's in their pocket at the time. How these groups differ in terms of spending can be examined further using a box plot. These include the mean of each group given here along with the interquartile range, which is the price range that contains the central 50% of transactions. Due to some extreme transaction values, for this plot we cut the y-axis between the range 0 and £10, effectively zooming in on the plot for clarity. We found that your loyalty only customers, given in red, have the smallest interquartile range, um, measuring £2.45 and spanning from £1.60 to £4.05. Maybe this is due to certain discounts offered by the scheme and this leads to similar spending habits amongst this type of customer. The largest interquartile range is that of card only customers given in green and this ranges from £2.45 all the way up to £5.40. Card only and both customers encompass all types of card customer whether they're a loyalty account holder or not. So looking at these two boxes green and yellow we can see that not only do the means sit higher but the top end of the interquartile ranges sits notably higher as well. So these boxes represent higher spending in general. This reveals that car customers, like I said, whether they're loyalty or not, are spending more. So one suggestion for the Greg's team, therefore, might be to have additional rewards, whether this be in the app or otherwise, for using a card. This would encourage more of this types of trans this would encourage more of this type of transaction. And it could transform some of those loose change, I'll just grab what I can transactions into card transactions where the customer buys whatever they fancy and ultimately spends more. Uh, secondly, we can look at the time that a transaction was made. The overall mean transaction time was 11.59 a.m. Again, looking into the group averages demonstrates interesting patterns. We can see that the mean, tra mean transaction times for card only and neither categories lies extremely close to the overall mean. In contrast, however, the loyalty only and both categories both sit about 40 minutes earlier than average. However, it's still really interesting to note that the combination of these two groups comes in on average much earlier than the card only and neither categories. 
So again, this can be looked at in more detail using a group, grouped box plot. The first thing to note is that the difference between these boxes is not as extreme as it was in the value plot. So we instantly learn that customer type affects the transaction value more than it affects the transaction time. However, there's still some points we can take away from this plot. The card only transactions given in green um, show the shortest interquartile range with 50% of transactions occurring between 10.03 a.m. and 1.48 p.m. This implies that card only customers don't vary as much as other groups when it comes to the time in which they visit Greg's. The loyalty transactions given in red display the largest interquartile range of four hours and 18 minutes. And this begins at 9.07 a.m. and finishes at 1.25 p.m. This range begins almost one hour earlier than the card only version that I just mentioned. Um, and as does the interquartile range for the both category, which is given in yellow, you can see they both start at a similar time. So remember the combination of the both and loyalty only groups comprises all loyalty customers. So this plot further supports the notion found in the means on the previous slide that loyalty customers shop earlier than anyone else. So we've got this portion of customers that visits earlier than others, and we've seen that in these graphs. Um, so one suggestion for Greg's, depending on their goal, would be to offer these customers a reduced item later on the same day in the afternoon, for example, to encourage multiple visits in one day, because it seems like these are mainly morning visitors. Or alternatively, to ensure that they make this earlier transaction repeatedly throughout the week, an incentive could be offered for coming back, say, three times in the week um, prior to noon. This ensures that this customer base repeats these early transactions, as well as ensuring they visit before the lunch rush to take pressure off the store. So this has been my exploratory data analysis, examining customer type. Thank you for listening. And I'll pass you on to Mike, who's gonna discuss his cluster analysis. Thanks, Heather. I'm Mike, and in this section, we want to better understand the customers by asking who is the Greg's customer? Are all customers the same and do they behave the same? Or can we find different distinct groups within the Greg's customer base? To do so, we analyzed Greg's credit card customers and answered five questions. How much are they spending? How often are they shopping with Greg's? On which days, at what time, and what products are they buying? It turns out the Grex customer is diverse. We found 12 groups within the Grex customer base, each making up between 1 and 21% of all credit card customers. To illustrate this diversity, I will now highlight three groups. The first group is a breakfast crowd. They spend around five pounds on average and 90% of their Grex visits are in the morning and mostly on business days. They buy a mix of savory products, sandwiches, and drinks such as sausage rolls, ham and cheese, toasties, and coffees. This is the biggest group, making up 21% of all credit card customers. The second group visits Greg's almost entirely during working hours and buys sweets 79% of the time, averaging just under four pounds per visit. This group really focuses on sweets such as donuts and yum yums. In this sense, it is a much more specialized group than the breakfast crowd that tends to buy a wider range of products. The Midday Sweet Treat group makes up 10% of all credit card customers. The last group, the Business Day Superfans, visit Greg's nine times more often than any other group and buy the widest range of products of all groups. They predominantly visit Greg's before 2 p.m. on business days. While they frequent Greg's more often, they only make up about 2% of all credit card customers. These examples show the diversity of the Greg's customer. Some have a favorite time they visit Greg's, some a favorite product, and some can't get enough of Greg's. They visit multiple times a day and buy a wide range of products, much more than the usual coffee and sausage roll. When trying to achieve the best possible customer experience, it is therefore important to keep this diversity in mind. There are many types of Greg's customer in the way they shop at Greg's and their needs differ between each group. Next up is Matt, who is going over the aggregated buying habits broken down into weekly average visits. Thanks, Mike. 
From the original data, we created summary tables for the products and transactions. These contained info on the number of repeat customers and their aggregated buying habits. This section also details the breakdown of those habits by how often they visit Greg's every week. Other metrics which we used were the day of the week and the day period. By analyzing the spending and frequency of customers during these periods, insight could be gained on common buying patterns. We extracted the unique customers for the 10 month period and calculated the number of weekly visits for each one, the products bought and the monetary outlays on these transactions. Looking at the graph, we can see that much of the customer base are infrequent customers or those who shop less than once per week over the total data set. Repeat customers make up a negligible percent of total customers. Being such a small proportion, they don't even show up on our graph. As the bar plot below shows, 70% of customers were buying products at Greg's between zero and 0 0.2 times per week, which means that over a 40 week period, they would visit Greg's between one to eight times. Keeping this in mind, we have broken down our analysis into decimal boundaries to take into account the large customer base falling into these regions. This slide shows the distribution of revenue obtained from the customer plans. It's interesting to see that this does not follow the same trend as the visits per week graph. There is still a downward trend of revenue as visits per week increases, only the gradient is not as steep. Even though customers who visit once, twice, three and four times per week make up almost none of the customer base due to their excess purchases, their combined percentage of revenue equals 10% of Greg's weekly earnings. In terms of business revenue by visits per week, we determined the majority of revenue is coming from the customers visiting between zero and 0 0.2 times per week. A small increase in the regularity of this customer base would result in a large increase in revenue. So here we have broken down the average spending of customers by how many times they visit per week. While not consistent for heavily repeating customers, we can see a slight downward trend in the average amount spent as the number of visits increases, suggesting that infrequent customers are higher spenders. One explanation is that customers visiting more frequently are buying products more for snack purposes rather than substantial meals. Those visiting more often in the 10 to 16 uh, weekly visit range show an uptake in the average spend. Those customers are also visiting more than once per day, meaning they are buying for friends and colleagues in work environments or are consuming more than less frequent customers. Comparing these bars directly though, doesn't give us the full picture how this, how this spending contributes to Greg's profit. So, Ian will explain further on how we can glean this information. Just like in the previous slide, we have a graph of average spending against the number of times customer visits per week. But on top of that, we've colored the graph by the percentage of business base these customers represent. If we remember from the customer base slides, the 0, 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 groups comprise the majority of customers. And if we look at those sections, we can see sort of the typical or average customer, the majority of customers that visit Greg's. As we can see from those sections, the average spending is going to be slightly more than four pounds, which corresponds with the evidence gathered from Heather in previous slides. Now that we've analyzed the Greg's customers' purchasing habits by the breakdown of customer base, as well as the business base, we're going to look at their purchasing habits by when they visit Greg's in a day and which days they visit Greg's within a week. Looking at the breakdown by times in the day, we can see an interesting relationship by when 
they visit during the day, as well as how many times during the week they visit. Looking at the zero group, the morning, lunch, and afternoon sections tend to be the most popular. But as we trend towards the right, the early and morning groups become more and more popular. This may be due to companies purchasing food for their employees before business hours. Across all groups, except for fifth, group 15, which we can largely ignore as an outlier, the late trading period tends to be the lowest percentage. It's advised possibly to give an incentive, such as a promotion or a discount during this period, to try and increase the percentage of people who come during the late period and boost revenue during that last part of the day. Similarly, for group zero, which yet again comprises the majority of our customer base, the early trading period tends to be the lowest. This probably is due to people not wanting to wake up that early, but it may be advisable to give incentives to have people try and come in earlier to get those incentives and boost that section of trade. Looking at the break time by week, we can see that they remain relatively consistent, regardless of how many times you visit per week. Looking at Sunday tends to be the worst across the entire section, with Saturday fluctuating wildly, depending on whether you, how many times during the week you visit. During the week, it remains relatively consistent, suggesting that week business is more consistent and solid, and weekend business is a little more fluctuating. Consequently, it's recommended that perhaps a deal during the weekend or promotions during the weekend to try and get more customers in and keep that trade relatively consistent throughout the week. Throughout this presentation, we've broken down our customer understanding by looking at exploratory data analysis for different customer types, creating customer demographics based on customer spending habits, and by looking at the breakdown of spending habits of customers based on how many times they visit Greg's every week. We hope that Greg's can use this data in order to effectively and efficiently market towards their customer base, as well as increase their customer's experience. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and have a nice day.